In this lecture, we are going to cover the static analysis of determinant beams. What do I mean by static analysis? I mean the process of calculating forces in a beam using the static equilibrium equations only. No dynamic forces are considered. For two-dimensional systems, these equations are. And what do I mean by a determinant beam? This is a beam which we can analyze solely using the equilibrium equations. For example, this is a statically determinant beam, whereas this is not. What is the difference between the two? This beam has three support reactions only. They can be calculated using the equilibrium equations. On the other hand, this beam has four unknown reaction forces, so the three equations are not sufficient for determining the unknowns. We call this a statically indeterminate beam. This lecture focuses on the static analysis of determinant beams only. A statically determinant beam could be drawn this way. We call this a simply supported beam. We could also have a variation of it, a simply supported beam with an overhang. A cantilever is another type of statically determinant beam. A beam with one or more internal hinges could also be statically determinant. This beam has one internal hinge. And here is an example of a determinant beam with two internal hinges. Before we embark on the analysis of these beams, Let's talk about their supports. Three types of idealized supports are generally used in beams. Roller support, pin support, and fixed support. But how do these supports differ from each other? They differ in the ways they move in response to forces internal to the beam. The roller support can move in two ways. It can rotate in order to prevent a bending moment to develop at the joint. And if necessary, it rolls in the direction parallel to its surface of contact so that it can avoid resisting a force in the same direction. But the support does not move when the force is normal to its contact surface. When such a force is present, a reaction force develops at the base of the support, per Newton's third law. Similar to the roller, the pin support can rotate preventing a moment reaction to develop. But the support does resist both a horizontal force and a vertical force. A pin does not move in either X or Y direction. The fixed support neither moves nor rotates. Therefore, it provides three support reactions, a force in the X direction, a force in the Y direction, and a bending moment. Now that we know how many reaction forces are associated with each support type, let's begin the analysis. Generally speaking, static analysis of beams involves calculating support reactions, internal forces, stresses, and deflections. Here, however, we are going to focus on calculating support reactions only. More specifically, we want to determine the reaction forces in a simply supported beam and a cantilever beam, subjected to a concentrated or a distributed load. Let's start with a simply supported beam with an overhang. The beam carries a concentrated load of one kilo newton. What are the reaction forces at the pin and roller supports? We start by drawing the free body diagram for the beam. There is one reaction force at the roller and two reaction forces at the pin. Since the reactions are not known, we can assume their directions. Each force can be shown having a positive or a negative direction. For the sake of consistency, we assume them to be positive per our sign convention. Now we write the three equilibrium equations. Solving the last equation, we get the second equation gives us AY, and from the first equation, we can see that AX is zero. So, here are the results. 
the non-zero support reactions. Since Ay came out negative, we know that the actual direction of the force is the opposite of the assumed direction. So, we flip the force direction and change its magnitude from negative to positive 0.5, meaning the force is acting downward with a magnitude of 0.5 kN. Now let's replace the concentrated load with a distributed load. Say we have three rows of sandbags stacked on top of each other, like this. We estimate the weight per unit length to be one half of a kilo newton. Since the load is rectangular in shape, we can model it as a uniformly distributed load. We show this using a rectangle like this. Let's draw the free body diagram for the beam. For the purpose of calculating the support reactions, we can replace the distributed load with its equivalent concentrated load. The magnitude of this concentrated load equals to the area of the rectangle. The position of the load is at the geometric center of the rectangle, which in this case is the midpoint of the beam. Again, we have three support reactions here, two reactions at A and one reaction at B. Here are the three equilibrium equations. Solving the third equation for BY, we get, then the second equation gives us AY, and we know AX is zero from the first equation. Here are the results. Or, now consider a cantilever beam carrying a concentrated load of 1.5 kN. We wish to calculate the reactions at the fixed support. Here is the free body diagram for the beam. And here are the three equilibrium equations. Solving them for the unknown forces, we get. So, there is an upward reaction force of 1.5 kN and a counterclockwise moment of 9 kN meters at the fixed support. Now consider the case that the cantilever beam is holding a bunch of sandbags the shape of which can be viewed as a triangle. Suppose we have measured the intensity of the triangular distributed load to be two kilonewtons per meter. We wish to calculate the support reactions for the beam. On the free body diagram, we are going to replace the distributed load with its equivalent concentrated load. The magnitude of the load is equal to the area of the triangle, which has a height of two and a base of seven. This gives us a total force of 7 kN. The load is placed at the geometric center of the triangle, which is 4.67 meters away from the left end of the beam. The diagram shows the support reactions at A as unknown forces. Here are the equilibrium equations. And here is the solution. There is an upward reaction force of 7 kN and a counterclockwise moment of 32.7 kN meters at A. See if you can analyze the following statically determinate beams, each having at least one internal hinge.